Welcome to For Love and Play. I'm matchmaker comic Yael Meisel. With me is comedians Keenan Weaver and Louis B. For Love and Play, the show about dating like a goddamn adult. We're going to discuss who to spend your time with for love or for play. Let's do it, boys. This show contains adult content for entertainment purposes. Listener discretion is advised. Not a doctor. All right, thank you for listening. We're back with another For Love and Play. I'm your host, Keenan Weaver, back with my favorite people, the Queen. What's going on, girl? What is going on? Valentine's Day. Super excited. Oh, yes, this is a special one. Mm. Uh, the recently promoted Baron. Baron. Yes, I am your Lord and Savior, Louis B. I am here once again to uh, pleasure your ear holes with my mellow accent. Great. We're glad that you're able to do that to all the listeners. Uh, we have a very special episode. This is For Love and Play's first first episode uh, for Valentine's Day. So clap it up for you guys for making it this far. Thanks to all the listeners who's been with us from the start. We're very excited. This is like, for a relationship podcast, this is like the ultimate, ultimate holiday so we're gonna have fun with this one we actually have a special guest joining us from the gary hour comedian gary levitt how are you doing i'm great man doing good yay i wouldn't call okay. valentine's day the greatest day but uh i live with it for, for a relationship podcast there's nothing bigger though C- can you yeah a lot of interest in dating good? yeah i mean that's that's what we do so there's nothing really i mean Christmas is kind of cool, but this is this is our Olympics. And for me, this is the holiday. It's like it only comes around. Nothing about Halloween. Yeah, Halloween's like the X-rated holiday. Valentine's Day could be R-rated. Christmas is lame because it's kind of the G-rated holiday. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's the one that everyone celebrates, except for this girl. Except for the Jews and the Muslims and the Hindus. (laughs) Yeah, and I, I just. I don't want to get into it because that's a whole <laughs> off topic. Yeah. It's just love. Love topic. encompasses all religion, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just a better. That's one. why Valentine's Day is the best. <laughs> exactly, because love is spread through anybody's creed, background, or experience, or religion. Right? We it really is the grandest holiday. Amazing. So. Mm-hmm. Gary, tell us a little bit about yourself before we jump into the actual specific Valentine's Day. You run a podcast. How long have you been on that podcast? You're also a comedian. So just a quick bio. Uh, yes, I'm a stand-up comedian uh, based in uh, here in New York. And uh, my podcast, The Gary Hour, I think we're about 23 episodes in. It comes out every Tuesday. And uh, we've had some great guests. We talked to... Anyone with a curious and introspective brain. We had uh, Kevin Allison from The State and The Risk podcast on. We mm-hmm. just talked to a psychiatrist. Um, we have a lot of like uh, authors and psychologists and comedians and musicians and artists of all kinds. And we uh, dive deep into the things that matters most to each of our guests. All right, great. But before we dig deep into what matters most to you and us... For this particular episode, uh, Louie, tell the people how they can join in on the conversation. This is what I need you people to do, and I keep asking you, and I'm going to keep saying it till I'm blue in the face. Uh, you know, you can follow us on Facebook at For Love and Play. That's For Love and Play. Or you can follow us on the Twitters at For Love and Play. That's, uh, the you know, the number four love and A-N-D play. And you can hashtag us at For Love and Play. So uh, so that way you, we could get your questions and answers. Uh, also, you can uh, yeah. So that's Twitter. That's uh, that's uh, Facebook. Or you could email us at forloveandplay at gmail dot com. And uh, take it away, Keenan. All right. So as we set up top, the conversation today will just be an open conversation about Valentine's Day. Yep. What that means to you, what you may have done in the past, what you're going to be doing in the future, because this is that week. Uh, Yael, yeah. how is uh for you as the lady, I feel like Valentine's Day, just like every other thing uh, that involves love, 
It's it's mainly for you. I mean, maybe not for me personally. I'm not a big. Um, I'm not a big. I don't know. I guess I don't make a big stink about Valentine's Day. I think though, how people behave on Valentine's Day towards their significant other, the person they're banging on a regular basis, whatever it is, mm-hmm. that is really important. Because that, the treatment of this day, it's like if you didn't get your mother a gift on Christmas, if you didn't call your mom for Rosh Hashanah, if you don't do something in acknowledgement, what men don't realize is there are very few women like me who don't give a shit. I don't care about a lot of this crap. I care about other things that are, I think, far more important. I am like the unicorn of Valentine's Day with a vagina. Mm-hmm. I'm not normal in that regard. So you're going to have, don't even, don't even bank on getting someone like me. Mm. It's, it's that rare. You right. know, mm-hmm. this is an important one. All right. Well, as we've established that no one has a shot of finding a Yael, yeah. uh, Gary, <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, what do you think? Just your, your first thoughts on Valentine's Day. And how you've approached it over the years. Well, Valentine's Day, it's a lot of pressure. It's kind of like New Year's Eve in that sense. You feel this pressure from society to have this super romantic night of Valentine's Day. And with all that pressure and expectation, it so rarely delivers. Right. Dan Savage has this thing where he says that rather than all the expectations... Just have sex first before you go out and do dinner and all the romantic stuff. Have sex first so you feel good, you're satisfied. You take away all the expectations of going to dinner, doing whatever else after, then coming home and supposedly having explosive romantic sex. It's too much expectation, too much buildup, too much pressure. Make love before you leave the house, right? Because you could be banging, sloppy, and drunk at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you know what I mean? It's not romantic. Yeah, and there's too much buildup. It won't ever... Do you guys put stock into, like, the actual day? Because here's here's what I like to do. I'd rather celebrate if I am celebrating with somebody, um, like, the day before or after the side chick days. Because it just doesn't have the crowds. It's just a madhouse outside on Valentine's Day. It's just ridiculous to even go through all of that. I think it, it should is. be something, I don't know, I feel like it should be a romance. If, it, if this matters to you, in my humble opinion, I feel like it should be a romantic situation between the two people, not necessarily in the public eye. Like, right, maybe go out the day before or after and spend the night together with wine, whatever, and ex- an exchange of gifts or poetry, whatever you like to do. If you're into s and maybe that's the night to shackle each other to the radiator. I'm just saying you should make it special, maybe privately. I like that idea of going out after or before, just to be a little rebellious and a little conformist. <laughs> exactly, which is exactly uh, what I try to strive for. So <laughs> that is... <laughs> But you you did it. You hit it right on the nose by comparing it to New Year's. Also, everything the prices on that day are so jacked up. You can go to the same restaurant, the same spot the day before and save, or the day after and save. And it just makes no sense. I'd much rather just do something at home on the day of Valentine's Day. And if we do have to have some type of plan to go out. We do it beforehand. And I think many yes, people you, are going to do it this year because it's on a Sunday. Don't ever tell your partner that that's the reason you're not doing it on the day, though. Yeah, I mean, that's but, fine if you're not, like, you're not as brash as Louie and I. Well, okay. <laughs> if you don't want to deplete all the romance out of the night, then uh, suggest going the day before or after to save a couple bucks. I mean, me and my, me and my, uh, more for me. my lady this, this, week, this year, you gotta uh, we're, not at, we're actually not doing anything on that weekend, and we're going to Lake Tahoe the weekend following. Yeah, Al, you're giving Jews a bad name. Oh. Safe. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Louie, what's been your experience? We got to break that one up. 
my experience with Valentine's Day. Yeah, like how how do you approach it? Oh, I it's it's a, t- a, t- a day for me to save money because obviously I never have a date on fucking Valentine's Day. Never, never. Like you? Oh no, no, no. I usually usually I'm single on the high dating, high holy dating high holidays of the year. The high holidays. The high holidays. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I, like I, I'm I'm gonna go stag for Purim this year. Uh, so I'm gonna dress up as Woody from Toy Story, and I'm just gonna be by myself. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can always go to a perm party with me. I'm gonna be David Bowie. That means See, I that's to- another thing about Valentine's Day. It makes everyone that's single feel more lonely. It's like Christmas well, time when you don't have a family. Yeah, I mean, I have friends that actually break up with girls, so that way they don't they don't have to buy a gift or t- take them out, and then they ch- get back with them after the holiday. They they do the same thing for Christmas. I mean, I think yeah, I think it's a it, I think it's a smart idea to do it. Like why, like honestly, on 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 you know for, uh, Valentine's Day, you know, imagine all these lonely chicks, um, you know, at bars and stuff. You, you know, a guy, a single guy could really rack up. I mean, that's exactly what I'm going to do if I don't have a date. I'm going to go to any bar I can think of and just hope I, what, I drink enough to spread them to go home with them. It's like, that's, that's the plan. Well, if you, if you were, if, if you're, if you have the blessing of having low, low enough self-esteem, I mean, have at it. No one's judging you. <laughs> I, to talk about that pressure that it makes, especially for single people. I, like you, Louie, have rarely celebrated uh, Valentine's Day with a, with an actual significant other. Most of the time, I actually, it's probably my fault, because I always just rather watch the All-Star game. I don't know why they did this, but basketball's All-Star weekend always falls on Valentine's Day weekend. Mm-hmm. So it's always been a conflict of interest, since I've always loved the sport of basketball more than anybody I've been with at any time. Not even, like, for... Jess Louie's crazy, which I want to explain. I want to explore more. So there really is a community of people that are breaking up just to avoid presence. Yeah, I mean, oh. like there's there's this um, and and I know we already spoke about this. This is a, a broadcaster. His name is Tom Lakis, and he, you know, he gives the advice: you shouldn't have a girlfriend on Valentine's Day. Uh, you should be like, if you, if you are, in fact, you shouldn't be dating a- a- anyone. You should just be out there, you know, you know, getting laid. But if you have a girlfriend break up with her because you could, you know, find some desperate chick on Valentine's day, you know, uh, sitting at like a, a Bennigan's or a TGI. Yeah, that's, that's the, that's the last place you're going to find a woman you want to take home for the night. That's the last place. I would, I would avoid those. Yeah, I would not be Benigan. fucking someone from the bar of Benigan. That is for goddamn sure. Or, or yeah, either Lord. that or Chipotle. I mean, I'm going to go to Chipotle. Oh, I'm going to Chipotle uh, next week. And see. Now, Chipotle, Chipotle is one of the greatest pickup places to ever be brought on this earth. Yes. It is legit amazing. I'm not sure about exactly on Valentine's Day, but every other day... It is an amazing experience. In fact, I might. I, in fact, maybe if I, if you know, if I want to save a little bit more money and I want to play Russian roulette, I'll go try to pick up a chick at Taco Bell. Think about it. It'll come to you. Uh, It'll come to you. Uh, Again, feel, we feel like make sure that Louis is up to date on all of his shots, and um, <laughs> you know, yeah, it. He's not dangerous per se. Hey, you trust me. I would love to too. see. I would love to see what happens if Valentine's Day ever fell on <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, that would oh, never happen. Shit. Never, no, it's close. That, that oh, damn. Yeah. No, that would be. Oh, I can't say that joke. Never mind. <laughs> Inside the danger zone, <laughs> it would be never, a lot yeah. of happy <laughs> That God, would be the God night to go to so. Benigan's. God made it so that that would never ever happened. There actually there's a viral video going on right now that kind of shows exactly this. Um, it's a girlfriend yelling at her boyfriend because apparently he spent his life savings um, to go to the Super Bowl. Ha ha. Word. <laughs> it's hilarious. She's just like cursing him out saying that Peyton Manning doesn't care about you. <laughs> He's never going to fuck you. And you go That's all the way over there to look at Peyton yeah. Manning's ass. <laughs> I mean, it's in, in hilarious. Order- 
But in all fairness, I mean, you know, you don't want to fuck Peyton Manning. You don't pay to see. You don't pay to see Peyton Manning fuck. You pay to see him leave with a ring. Let's do this. I mean, that that's the whole point about like like women in sports is most guys don't really we don't really harp on whatever your interests are. Like I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying we tend to leave you alone if you have interests that we're not interested in. But there seems to be a, a growing community of women that that wants to like belittle and think that because you're in the sports, it's somehow taking away from the attention or whatever. It is. And that's just oh, what she showed. Keenan, Keenan, yeah. before we play the clip, I have a I have a brief story that will bring your whole heart and soul to tears. I thought I went in the archives of the crazy last night and pulled out a special one for Valentine's Day just for you. Oh. All right. All right. Well, so no, really quickly. Years ago, I w- was dating one of the Ford children, and these are people they own. I don't know the football stadium. I don't even know what that means. They own the car company. They own everything. They're that kind of money. Anyway, I was probably in the neighborhood of 1819. He was in the neighborhood of like 21, 22. It was the Stanley Cup. That is for hockey, right? That is hockey. The Detroit was playing for the Stanley Cup, and he had box seats fully loaded. And he only had one extra pass with him. He offered it to me, and I was like, oh, dude, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. This is one of those things. You need to take one of your boys to go with you. He dropped to his knees. He's like, you are the most beautiful woman I have ever seen in my entire life. And he's like, and when it, that ticket is for Beyonce, your name is all over it. I was like, that's the way shit's supposed to be. Oh, by the oh, way. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm saying I turned down a, a box yeah, something I, special I think, ticket. I think that shows exactly, that's a perfect example of why you called yourself a unicorn mm-hmm. earlier in the podcast yep. and nobody vilified no, for and you. You know what, he had an amazing time and believe me, spoiled me for weeks. That's what, that's what should happen. Like, if you're not interested in something, why go and suck the fun out of someone else who is? Like, that's just, just leave it alone. There's times, there should be things that people have in common that you guys do together. Yeah. There should be something like an 80-20 rule where 80% of the things you guys would want and actually enjoy and do something together. Mm. And then there's 20% of the time where you guys have different interests and you enjoy those things, not together, but with other people that enjoy those similar interests. Like, I got, it was awesome. It was awesome. I got mad love from the family. And the, I, wo- I won the, the network when I, in that one, that one act of selfish, selflessness, selflessness. I won the room. Today in uh, the 2016 uh, girlfriend draft, we accept the yell my The who will trump me is his wife. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea how you lost the Ford family. Hmm. And this is going to be something that we talk about on another topic. Because <laughs> that yeah. doesn't even... that Outside of My the whole Stanley Cup, thing, Stanley Cup thing, She's I'm, like, I'm just sure? very upset. I'm very yeah. upset that you... Uh, one of Americans' royalty. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like that's the heir of Americans' royalty. And you, you lost Not it. once. Keenan didn't spread them once. I, I don't. That yeah. doesn't make sense. Well. I'm telling you, it just it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. All right. This whole this whole meant to be. What what does that even mean? It's it's Disney fairy tale stuff. It's all we're playing. Yeah, no, maybe that. you got to feel the fire. Listen, I knew this guy <laughs> so well. Believe me, there's it, it should have been. He held out without sex for far too long. I just, it wasn't there. I I feel like this whole just like Gary said this this fairy tale it it, yeah. it would have worked it would have worked what what <laughs> yeah I mean I'm still trying to find a, a flying carpet oh lord uh, let's right, call him see, see a whole new world back. well you know what it is with Di- we grew up with Disney and they tell you you'll find love and you'll live happily ever after but what they don't tell you 
is that it's going to take a lot, a lot of work to get there, like constantly, because you have to maintain your relationships, yeah. and the maintenance is work. Well, that, right. it's, it's even worse than that. They, they, you know, it's like, yeah, you can find love, but the only way, if you're a dude, the only way you could get the chick is if you're a rich prince. Well, the, this rich prince didn't didn't get the chick either. Um, well, he got a, he, he got, just another, got another one. He got That's another right. chick. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> he just went. He just went to Seven Eleven. Went to the white he girl section. He definitely didn't go to Seven Eleven because oh. uh, he's a Ford Air. But no, he definitely, he definitely got did go to Seven Eleven. Seven Eleven. Oh my God! You don't even Ford's know how cool it was to me. Shit. He went. To, he went to. Actually, no. He went. He didn't go. To, he didn't go to Seven Eleven. He went to the like the knockoff Cumberland. Oh jeez! He went to Cumberland. Ridiculous. Anyways, I found I found the video of the super uh, the chick going ape shit. Oh, go for it. Let's do it, right? Yes, I did. You're a dick. Can you hear it? What I said? You're a dick. What did I said? You're a dick. Wait, tell me again what I said. No, you're not gonna make fun of me. No, because that's not true. What did you say? I don't remember. <laughs> he said, don't bother you during football with my feelings and shit and bother you and upset you. Please, please, not till after football. Not till after the Super Bowl. Is that what I said? Yeah. That's not what I said. That's what you said. That's what you said. Not if you can wait till after the game. I might have said that. Yeah, something like that. I, I, why do I have to fucking wait? You don't have to wait. Football's not a, football's not a, a person. Yeah. It's a thing. It doesn't give a fuck about you. I don't know why you fucking want to fuck it so bad. Because it don't sure if it's fuck don't give a fuck about you. Mm-hmm. You think Peyton Manning's out there fucking jacking off to you? Because he's not. He really don't give a fuck about you, Jerry Perry. He really don't. So I don't know why you want to fucking change your life and go fly out to California and spend your life savings to go fucking get a glimpse of Peyton Manning's asshole because he ain't fucking thinking about you. He's really not. He's really not. Oh, they need fans like me. They need fa- No, they don't. They really don't. Honestly, okay, I, let me stop this real quick. She's talking about, oh, you want to see Peyton Manning's asshole. You know, uh, money bet she don't give up the asshole. Back to the... <laughs> they, could do, they could do without you. Actually, you would harm... Honestly, it's chicks like this that, like, they don't give no anal and they don't blow... They don't blow... They don't get blowjobs. That's why she's his girlfriend, not his wife. What? They're going to kick the fuck out, go into jail. Mm. Yeah, I think they could do without all that, actually. Maybe if you stayed your ass home, they'd have a better chance. There you go. And you could find her at the bottom of some lake somewhere. <laughs> I, I I say this is a good example of why a uh, lady should be more like Yael and very less like her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you seen the video of, of uh, it was a compilation of chicks just busting up their dudes' Xboxes? Yes, which pissed me I off so much. I do it. I swear to God, the one time you didn't fuck me to play video games, that would be it. Why? Where does that entitlement you come from? You could bring fucking crack cocaine in the house before you bring that shit in my house. I will not. <laughs> where does where does that entitlement come from, yeah? Like I don't understand how. Expensive. I think the point in that video was <laughs> the compilation was. Uh, they literally like toddlers was just destroying these t- <laughs> the video okay. like. This is like what so I rage filled. If you wanted that shit on the table, I need Chanel bags, active living child care, and cocaine. That has to all be cool if I'm going to let you be a video game loser. No Damn. way. Damn. I will not. You might, need, you might need the cocaine if you don't get the daycare, too, just to right. keep up yeah. with the kids. Exactly. I want to I wanna go to your first statement, though. Your first statement to the video was, if you choose the game over sex... I would destroy that. <laughs> Why? Will not. Why? Will not. How, how come a guy can't turn down sex? Women do it all the time. No, I, okay. Like, if we were supposed to, like, I, I'm saying, like, if you were gamey, I mean, I just think it's weird. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just weird. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not even saying, like, specifically, if the reasons for a game, sure, whatever. What I'm saying is, why do women feel entitled so much that a man can't, you can a fuck man after can't say no? Because 
the games just keep going. These, like a football game, that's eventually going to be over. There's an end of time. This crap, it's it's like going on drug runs, like drug binges. Actually, we People have people can stay up for three days playing this, like doing this garbage. We, we but ha- why, we have why already... don't you just become more interesting than the game? Yeah, we actually How, have. What are you supposed to do at that point? Hey, yo, it's your fault that you're not more interested. Damn. Oh. Oh, that shot's fired. Well, listen, <laughs> I am plenty interesting. Well. This but then has never been a problem saying, like, for me. I'm the, saying I wouldn't tolerate it. That's, but that's, that's the whole point is there's plenty of guys out here that stop playing a game because they want to spend time with their girl. It's because those girls are actually entertaining, fun, and more interesting. If okay. you're boring, like that, that's what ha- what happens is you turn the game off and then you want to watch reality shows and Kim Kardashians. Like no, I, no, yeah. Property Brothers, Property Brothers. Oh Jesus, that that, that show really. <laughs> a- anyways, we got we got audio of Yael flipping out on a, a guy sh- that she was dating that chose to um, game. So here, here, let me exclusive. Yeah, we we were able sure. to get the audio. Hey, I tell you what I'm going to give you, snakes. <laughs> I'm going to give you to the count of ten to get your ugly, yellow, no-good keister off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. All right, Johnny, I'm sorry. I'm going. One, two, ten. Oh, my God. <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy animal. animal. That's exactly it. That's right. (laughs) And if you don't have any money, that's it. Fucking hell. (laughs) So, Gary, I probably should have asked this to you up top. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Single, dating, what's your status right now? Single, dating, yes. Okay. Uh, I nailed it right on it. Okay. So, with that, what what type of... um, what type of person are you looking for? I like how you said person. You're careful now. I am. I, I've done it times. <laughs> I, I like female people. <laughs> Great. <laughs> They're cool sometimes. Yeah. Busting up PlayStations. Yeah, I that's a little... I busted up a PlayStation. I did have an ex destroy uh, a mandolin that a friend had built me. <laughs> mm. Shit. Yeah. I think that stuff is really kind of fun. Like a really feisty, crazy woman is really fun when you're in your early 20s. <laughs> right, but, uh, right. Once you get out of your 20s, you realize, all right, that's Sid and Nancy shit. Where's up? No, actually, I was, uh, I, I, I saw a couple that the dude was in his late 30s, right? Maybe early 40s. This was uh this was like a mentor of mine when I was kind of like in college, and we would play Madden all the time, and I literally witnessed his uh his now wife, I think it was possibly girlfriend at the time, um, rip the PS2 out of the wall while we were play- <laughs> while we were playing, ripped it out of the wall, and I was just in shock. I was like, oh my god, that. Well, it's it's similar to the phone. I mean, I I dated this girl for a short time, and she had one of the best lines. She because she couldn't. She was a little boring. I started to get bored in the relationship, but we're out at a bar, and and uh, I just started looking at my phone. And she turns to me and she goes, "Oh, is there is there someone else you'd rather be talking to now?" Oh man, burn, burn, burn. It's a good yeah. line. Best thing I got from the relationship. <laughs> and uh, just ladies and gentlemen, you should not be leaving relationships with burns of any kind. That's not, <laughs> that's shitty. That's not what we want to get out of these. But, but when she asked me that, I know it was kind of a rhetorical question, but I answered it in my head and I thought, actually, yes, there is other people I would like to be talking yeah. to because uh, she wasn't all that mentally stimulating. Ooh. See the interesting thing. This is what I'm saying. But that's why anytime I already hear a, a hint of sarcasm and retort, I always go with the most assholeless answer that you could possibly provide, so that 
they don't have the chance to do the quote unquote burn. They're left to deal with that whole, oh yeah, I opened this can of worms. I yeah, well, the phone, is, the, the phone is similar to the Xbox now. I mean, it's very easy to uh, distract yourself from the people around you. Well, I mean, as someone that, that I, when I was on a date, well, twice this has happened to me. Like, I was on a date, and the, the chick was on her phone, and, in fact, one of them, she was arguing where not one but two of her ex-boyfriends while, you know, we were at, B- I took her to a nice place, BB, Brazilian, um, Dallas BB. Bennigan's? Yes, I took it to Bennigan's. <laughs> uh, we, I, I, you know, I was like, I ordered the the blooming onion, and she was too, <laughs> she was too busy. She was too busy on her on her freaking phone. So uh, instead of me argue, well, at first I tried to take the phone out of her hand, which you never do. Yeah, that um, was wrong. Yeah, no. that was wrong. Um, and she's like, you never take a phone out of a woman's hand, and and then I was like, well, okay. So I, I I said oh, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom and I just walked out and left that dummy with the check. But see that's oh. what we, that's so passive aggressive. You he went from aggressive to just straight up passive aggressive. Yeah, like how does <laughs> that was that was very a big switch. Like just you can, I condone the leaving. Don't don't get me wrong. I condone the leaving. I condone, <laughs> I condone the consequences. What I'm saying <laughs> is is you should have said. I'm leaving because of. No, no, because then she'll leave with me and I want her to pay. <laughs> <laughs> There's part of me that loves that you did that. And then the other part of me is like, that's not right. Well, you uh, know uh, what? You know, it's not right that, you know, you know, the, the dummy w- wanted to fight with her ex, well, supposed ex-boyfriends while she was on a date with me. I'm like, uh, you know. Oh, what, that's what, classless what, and fucker. I think you did the right thing. Like, what am I? That's Ubu- disgusting. Yeah, I mean, what kind of, what am I? Some sort of, do, 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 get the fuck out of here. Listen, yeah. Like, if you're not feeling a date, you can tell someone straight out. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, like, fighting with an ex on a date, that's irreprehensible. I would have gotten up and left hmm? without word. I mean, I, I can't even tell stories because I've gotten up from dates with, <laughs> Way less. Far less. Far <laughs> less. What she, she just did. Mm. I don't even know what that... I, I have no idea what my reaction to that would be. Because I've never let anything get that far. Yeah. Yeah, I think just having your phone out during a date is yeah. not good. Really? Yeah. It, yeah. You put really? the now, phones the away. Like, phones okay. go away. Especially on a first date. Okay. Whoa. I don't mean to be a dude about this, but like... Some of us a have a job, like some of us have jobs that are not, It'll like work. they It'll don't work. end at five o'clock. I'm saying if someone's texting, like for example, it's like if I have a big case that I'm working on, like It'll I would work. have to, I'm saying for <laughs> me to not, no, for me to not answer a text message work related on a date could cost myself Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Then don't go. I guess you'd have to explain that to your date first. It's not even. It's not even about an explaining. I've I've had consulting jobs where your phone is literally tethered to you, but there comes a point where you have to separate your personal from business and give the person in front of you an attention that they deserve, and to have your phone out is disrespectful. Whether yeah. it's for work or what other reason. Well, so there there was this thing. So I think Psychology Today did it. It was a test where they put, they took a series of couples, put them in a room together for fifteen or twenty minutes, and they put like twenty. They kept doing it, and then they had them each bring their phone into the room, place it in front of them, and then just have a conversation. And then when they came out of the room, they asked them their intimacy level they felt with each other. Then they did it again with 20 other couples and made them leave their phones outside of the room. And every single time, the couple, the, the couple that didn't have the phone in the room with them felt a deeper connection to each other. Yes. I mean, I'm not that... saying bring it to bed. I'm saying, like, it, it, can't, it can't be relationships remove me from legitimate responsibility. Like, that's where a lot of people get lost. I don't know. Like Maybe you're, maybe you're a special case, but the, the phone, 
is a portal to the outside world because there's thousands of people you could talk to on the phone or whatever. It's just yeah. this portable. It's this portal away from the person you're with. So that's really right. what it kind of represents. It creates a disconnect, but it's yeah. still not even a special case because, again, prioritize your time. If you've got to be a person who's so important, you did that because you've learned to prioritize. There's, there's nobody at the top that doesn't understand priority. And there are certain times where work should not be the priority. And if you can put your phone away for the two minutes while you're in the bed and Same your guy's way. not... But y- y'all can do that. Y'all I, can do that as long yeah. as she knows that, that that comes with the package. That's part of the package, you know? If you want to date a celebrity, you know it comes with the package that you're going to be stopped in public and they're going to ignore you and talk to your celebrity yeah. partner. Yeah. If y'all wants to be a rock star with her constantly on the phone, then that comes with the package. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a rock. Okay. And that's a, that's a package that most people don't play with for long because of a lack no. of respect. I've dated some bit. I've dated some dude. I've dated some dudes that are properly like that are that are properly famous. It's it's you accept mm-hmm. that every girl in the room wants to fuck your boyfriend, and I, I'm saying seriously, it's it's something that's not to in follow. Their, that's in their control. Your the, your phone use is, is completely one hundred percent in your control. You can't get mad about it though, ever. But that's one hundred whole- can because that is something that you can control. You choose to not be on the phone. But doing my job is something I have to do. And, and you know, what I mean? I'm not I'm not bringing the phone to bed. I'm saying that there should be a cutoff time that you like you can't do business after this and this time unless it's a special situation. Like there should be boundaries. But I'm saying I would never on a how many dates were you on with this girl that asked you if you would rather be talking to somebody else? But what number date was that? That was probably about four or five months into it. I mean, were there other... That's a long time. I would never... I don't know. I would never say anything unless there was like... I would never say something like that unless it were, there was other conflicts surrounding it. Like, if we were arguing about something, oh, is there someone more than that? Like, but it wouldn't be that incident. I don't know. I'm saying that would not be an incident that would otherwise... It wouldn't bother me, probably. It wouldn't bother you if you were out and the uh, your date just started looking on his phone? What if he had to? What if it's his right. job? What if someone's confirming plans for a later date? Like, it, Right. You, you seem to, because it's, you seem to hold a one excuse. And Yael's one excuse is getting money. So... <laughs> if, the boy, if the boyfriend, if the boyfriend, <laughs> if the boyfriend is a pro gamer and brings in a hundred thousand dollars on the PlayStation, no. <laughs> then no. it's cool. On the but PlayStation, well, if the phone, fo- if the phone, if the phone isn't bringing in money, she would have a problem with the phone. Because like if you were a Tinder, I'd be pissed. But if you were responding <laughs> to an email from your boss or from a client or your mother, like that's part of accepting, like. You're a person. Why? Why not yeah, get mad you, about something serious? You gotta, you gotta budget your time. You know, like you should be responding to that on your time. Exactly. Now is our time. And when that, I'm out on a point. date, I want, I want their attention. The point is the the priority, and I'm, right. and I'm letting you know that that this is this is something that I specifically had to dr- struggle with because of before I got into comedy. That's the life I lived. It was my clients were worldwide. So specifically, I would have, I think I told this story on the podcast. There was one time, it was a Sunday night. My client was in Australia. So that's their Monday morning already. So the client is at work. I am technically at, not at work. And I was with my girlfriend. And they called. And I had to get up and call. And that's just an example of what life was like with me in a relationship and because I was young and in that job I did everything that the job wanted me to do whenever and completely disregarded her at all times the the job was always the priority when there are instances that are emergencies and this is the point there are instances that are emergencies like you're saying which is fine and most people would be understanding of that if you learn the difference between all the time and emergencies. 
But if you don't learn the difference, then any time, even if it's emergency or not, then becomes an annoyance because it's building and building and building. And, and that's again, a common thing. That's a common thing in relationships if one person works too much. You know? Right. But there's you also people that are just addicted to their phone. Exactly. You know, I've got this friend. She she can't seem to hold a guy ever. And she's such a phone addict. And then she was dating this guy for, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks. And she brought him into the circle of friends. So he comes in. And he doesn't know anybody. He only knows her. And then we're all hanging out. We're outside. And uh, sitting on blankets. It was the summer. And uh, she's on her phone looking at Instagram, just scrolling through Instagram, and he's just, like, sitting next to her, like, la di da di da you know? And, I'm, and I kind of look at her, like, get off your phone and be with your boyfriend and kind of incorporate him into the group here. I think it's just the phone provides an exit from dealing with life and what's in front of you. It's, it's a grave disconnect, and I, I hate the whole tech. I, I really think we're, like, overconnected, and examples like that show how we are losing the connection with people, the intimate con- connection that we used to have, because we're not really spending that much time together. We're always on the phone, and if you're a person who doesn't subscribe to that, people think that you're weird. Like, I'm horrible with my phone because I hate it. I hate the level of connection. And if I don't respond to a female's text in a certain amount of time, they literally start thinking the worst of whatever situation could possibly be. When it's just, my phone was out of reach at the time. Like, and it's literally, and it's my length of my arm is out of reach. Like, that. Well, I mean, it's so funny when you start to get to know someone, like if you're dating someone, and then maybe at first they take a day to respond. But then when you're with them, you see what a phone what a phone addict they are. They always have their phone in their hands, so you realize, wait, you get my text almost right away all the time. You know? Yeah, now that that is a, that is ironic that that's happening too. But I remember one girl who used to complain and she lit my my habit is when I get home, I literally walk through my front door, my like bedroom is kind of like to the left, and I can I throw my phone on the bed to the left and then my living room and couch and tv and everything is over off to the right so i walk your xbox (laughs) exactly i walk in and i throw the phone away and go like so i never get my phone messages until i go back into my bedroom i started doing that recently consistent well and then and then whoever you're dating will know your phone habits when they get that far to even be allowed in the apartment <laughs> exactly i mean there's just we're we're really talking about dating etiquette here yeah mhm and i think uh you know there's all this technology stuff is still fairly new and maybe the younger generation uh coming up with it have different etiquette but uh i thought that psychology today uh test was kind of interesting because the phone really does deplete the intimacy in the room when they're out it does it's, yeah it's just be present it's the same thing like we're all comedians so it's the same thing like when someone pulls a phone out in the show <laughs> it's the same exact feeling that someone would get on a date yeah it's i mean what do you do when you're on stage and someone's in front of you on their phone you immediately are annoyed at that. Exactly. It's like instantaneous. It's almost, it, it's so, I don't even know how to describe that feeling. It's just like, it's like, oh, you paid to come see me. And then I'm not even important for you to look up. Mm-hmm. You could use my uh, ex's line. You just go up to him and say, hey, is there someone else you'd rather be <laughs> listening to now? <laughs> They're watching it's Louis almost- C.K. On their, on their phone. Yeah, right. How dare them. And most times, always you address bring that. They always address that. That's so funny. That's true. So and that would be pretty, I, I would be really insulted if they were watching another stand-up comic on their phone while I'm on stage. <laughs> they just pull up a YouTube video. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm playing Candy Crush. 
<laughs> no, See, it just like took also, me right out. <laughs> no, with some people, there's some people though that are addic- that that like my biggest one of my biggest problems is like I love to work. I like I actually like my job. I enjoy it. I really do. I love it. I've noticed when I like somebody, that time is thoughtlessly made. I'm saying it it comes. It just like something inside my behavior towards that individual shifts and they become important. Right. I'm saying like I won't take calls because like there's something about them like I want exactly. to. Exactly. That's what I said. That's you know what exactly I mean? what I was saying about being more interesting. That's exactly what I was saying. You automatically right. so make like, the switch because of the other thing is more interesting. But when the person isn't, then you are more inclined to do the other stuff that you'd rather do. That was the same. Right. That was the same point exactly. I was trying to make with the PlayStation. Well, well, this dating etiquette thing. I feel like, like when you do, when I do Tinder dates. You know, the first time I have a Tinder date, I don't even consider it a date. I consider it a meeting. But I'm finding that most women uh, expect me to pay. Right. And I never know the etiquette for this because to me it's not a date. It's a meeting to decide if we want to go on a date. So where, where do you – that's my thing. So where are you going? Are you going to meetings or are you going to dates? So what I'm asking is what – where are – how do you approach like the uh, – I'm pretty uncreative. I just say you want to meet for a drink. But as far as feminism has come, and as far as equality has come, they still want the man to pay. I mean, I, but that's because uh, they're always going to pick and shoot. They, they parry chick. Parry cherry. I'm done. You yep. get what I'm saying. <laughs> and and that's, yep, that's going to make, the, that's gonna make yeah, the, the that. gag real. <laughs> well, I think Yael yeah, 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 would probably gonna... be best to, to give her perspective, being that she's the woman here. Is she? Why is that? Is it a primal thing, or is it just not wanting to pay thing? Mm. Primal. <laughs> okay. In my opinion, and most women are um, far more to the right, like they're far more stringent than I am, I feel like a first date is like meeting ever. Okay, the the it's it's cherry picking how to say this right. (laughs) Right, it's like choosing my words very carefully here. I feel like a first date should not be expensive because you don't know if you want to date this person. Not not the price. It's the why. Do women expect men to pay, even though world is changing? So, so I don't know. I I feel like let's put it bluntly. We all know that women deserve equal pay as men, right? Mm -hmm. And if that utopia day that should not be a utopia comes, say that it's tomorrow. Do you think that everybody getting paid equally, that women would then say, you know what? Since we now all make the same amount of money. I can pay for myself on a date, too, when it's the first date. We know that won't happen. Like, there's no way. You don't even have to try to search the words. We know. Okay, when a woman usually, okay, so standard etiquette, though, when a woman offers to pay, usually she's doing it for two reasons. When she offers, it's being done for two reasons. When she insists, it's being done for one. When she insists on paying, that's a sign. Not into it. I'm not into you. Boom. No. You know, I'll throw down $10. Oh, no, I've got it. No, I, I'm good. That's her her gesture of, like, I'm not into Like, I'm not even going to cost you 10, 10 bucks. You know what I mean? I, I'm not into you. I feel that like never happens to me. What happens is I end up paying, and then I find out they're not into me. Yeah, no. that, yeah, yeah me too. That's right? Crazy. I've never had a woman if be like, no, 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 let I me would pay. Spend a dime. <clears throat> if I were not into you, but like, I've gone on dates with guys and like, I, I've offered, I've offered as a gesture of like, I feel like it's, it's polite, 
Like, I'm not going to assume that you're going to pay. And it's usually, I don't know. See, and it's for me, it's not even a trick. Like, I don't know. I'm not guaranteeing you a lot on a first date. So, like, I don't expect you to guarantee me a lot either. Like, I can offer to pay my bill. And usually it's just done as a gesture, you know, of being polite and respectful. But, like, usually those guys like me more. You you know, know what I mean? These are people that, like, I find respect the gesture. But, again, the, the, the question is more so why is that expectation is still held to? Why be progressive in so many other lanes, but then in certain lanes... It's because it's taking be- women a very... Okay, let me explain something to you gentlemen very seriously that you might not even understand as a reality here, okay? There is a lot of equal shit on the table right now, all right? There are a lot of things that we as women are conditioned to believe as we grow into a society where we do have equal partnership, we have equal equal pay, equal political power, as we're evolving into that, yes, the dating field has to be more level. You cannot expect to be taken care of like a princess. You simply cannot. That's, that's obnoxious. And it's a turnoff. And while men who find women empowering and want someone like you know, willing to pay, even if they don't let her do it, it's, it's the act of gesture that they respect, which shows the man, I have respect for your time for your, and for your money, like, and for you as a person. I, women don't want to swallow that. They want to hold on to these bullshit ideas of chivalry. It's like, you're going to get the chivalry. You're just not there yet. You haven't earned your way. It used to be 10 years ago, and today it was much easier to transition into I am your boyfriend and you are my girlfriend or whatever. It was much easier to label something than it is today. These relationships still exist. They're just harder to attain. It's harder to bust that door down now. I like that you haven't earned it yet. I I, I might try that on a date when the the bill comes. Oh, you haven't earned it yet. That that is the philosophy of this. Of this whole <laughs> podcast is no, but when you have more respect for a woman who offers to pay, and that, you know what I mean, even if you your intentions are paying, you want to pay. The fact right. that she offered and you had the opportunity to turn it down, does that leave you with a better or worse taste in your mouth? Way better. It's a big bonus. Right. Just so the offering. Did... Go ahead. Just the offering. But I, I haven't been finding that. I've been finding that there's just the expectation, and sometimes I'll even do like little psych, little psychology tests to cut, to kind of break this down. I'll either show up early, so I get my drink and I'm waiting, and then sometimes they'll just come and just will just sit down with me without a drink, and I'll just see how long it'll go before they either decide to go get one themselves or expect me to get it for them, or I'll come late. And see if they're got a drink for themselves or not. And almost all the time, it just never, it always works out where I have to get them their drink. They'll sit there alone for 10 minutes waiting. Even though I text and say, I'm I'm on my way, I'll I'll be 10 minutes late. They won't get a drink. They'll wait for me to come, sit down and get us both drinks. I always get a drink. If I'm waiting for somebody, I always order a glass of wine or something. Always. But, yeah. but especially with the women that I set up and the ones who don't listen to me, fuck them. That's right, (laughs) ladies. If I've set you up and you didn't listen to me, fuck you because you didn't listen. (laughs) Don't want to be sloppy drunk. I just wonder if it is a primal thing. No, wait a second, though. It's It's conditioning. It's conditioning. They don't want to be sloppy drunk. It might look, they might think, and I can tell you this is the case, men who show up, uh, you've mixed reviews, like, how many guys complained that this woman showed up on a date sloppy drunk? It's a huge turnoff. It's a big complaint. You hands down look like a whore. It doesn't matter. Like, if you show up tipsy or you're, like, I don't know. Maybe it's, they don't want to, maybe they want to get tipsy with you rather than before before you. Or they're coming from three other Tinder dates where they got really drunk. <laughs> I, I think you should change your. Uh, <laughs> I think you should change your your location. I feel like 
you should try if you if you're the type to do these social experiments. I'm interested to see how the experiment would go if you say, "All right, let's meet at Barnes and Noble." <laughs> you just pick a corner, no drinks, and you do your meeting that way. It's not a first date. <laughs> uh, you know, if, I, if I, you're I, really I'm so deep with my tests that I have a control group where I always meet at the same bar, and sometimes I'll even wear the exact same outfit. So there's less variables. <laughs> so yeah, this is a man of science right here. Yes, uh, I'm breaking uh, it down. I really think you should try to change the location. I don't <laughs> think date, so I have no experience, but I also don't really do the whole pay for first date thing. My first date is is always the same thing that you're saying. You're trying to meet the person to get to know them. Because you don't really know that. I've been that way before online dating. So what I'm saying is do just do some type of activity where conversation is the priority. But there's not this other distraction of I'm feeding you. I'm doing this. I'm doing those things. You can just go meet and talk and pick those locations. You can hide it in the guise of safety for the experiment if whatever you know, I understand a lot of people aren't as blunt as I am. <laughs> like I do, I'm just realizing that, that I have, like, the honesty, and a lot of people try to sugarcoat things. So you can try to figure out a way to sugarcoat it, but I'm saying meet in a location where talking is the priority and not... Right, same thing, a loud bar that can become expensive, sexual, and you have really no way to flow and control the conversation because you're talking over noise and you're becoming intoxicated. Right. That, that's, that's always one of my sayings. If you're looking for a long relationship, most of your time in that long relationship is going to be spent in conversation. So you better make sure you're with someone that you could have a good conversation with. And the point, and most what people do is the first few dates are always something where this, they're inebriated. So you're not even getting the sober person where this is why people say, I don't know what happened. Six months he's changed or she's changed. And it's really not that she's changed. It's that now y'all are both sober and you're dealing with the sober person six months in where you wasn't doing that in the beginning. Right. And everybody's yes. way more fun and junk than they are sober. So that's why now the relationship is boring. You got to keep drinking. That or don't start. Yeah, I feel like I dated a girl where we had to, where we drank every single time, and I started to realize, wow, I've never really been sober with her for that long. Ew. And it happens. It's like the first, at least the first three, four dates. It's it's based around drinks every time you meet on. Yeah, well, it lubricates the situation. It certainly does. Yeah. But you don't ever get to really meet that that sober, boring person. Like, what does she do when she's not drinking? You don't know. Maybe that's that for is. the best, <laughs> right? Maybe it's for the best. This way, you can just enjoy each other's company, enjoy each other's night, have a good time. Sometimes reality could just be a big pain in the ass. Right. All right. <laughs> no, see, I don't think you should get. I don't think you should get so fucked up that you're making like bad choices that are going to affect you today, tomorrow, and you know whatever but like i think that it loosens the mood and creates the element of romance as long as both parties are on the same page but think drinking think, the same think, liquor think through all the people that you meet and the best connections that you have just relation not even talking romantically just relationships in general most of those people that you enjoy spending time with you don't focus it's not focused around those loosening up they're they're actually the people that loosen you up it's the person it's the connection it's not the drink so when you find that going back to the scientist you're adding a variable that has been loosening up when you're trying to find that actual event you're trying to find someone who does loosen you up and relaxes you and makes it feel easy but you guys are using this other catalyst to get that feeling and then you have nothing to go off of your baseline is done 
Right. Yeah, I mean, that's that could be for the best. That's my Valentine's Day. Uh, I, I, wanna, I want you, I really want you to try the experiments. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, just go places and talk. Like, that's it. I just be like, like, yo, uh, let's, let's just meet. I want to just, you know, talk with you a little bit. No drinks. You can step down to coffee. Do Starbucks. Well, sometimes I think about relationships like, you know, if you spend 24 hours with a person, you kind of want to get away from that person a lot of times. And then I think, well, that's fine, because if I spend 24 hours alone, I get sick of my own thoughts and I want to be with somebody. You know, so sometimes I'll think about it like that. Like, you know, I don't know how much time I want to spend sitting there sober in general. <laughs> that's because most people are boring. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, there is there is a thing to the art of the conversation, you know. I from doing my podcast, I feel like I've become a better conversationalist, and a lot of times it just comes down to being inquisitive and asking interesting questions. And it's best on a date when information comes out naturally in a conversation, right? You, you know, finding out that they have a brother because it's part of some bigger story. You yeah, know, just, but uh, I, I've been on dates whole... where it's like. Oh, yeah, so do you have any brothers? The inter any, uh, interview, the canned interview questions, right? Yes, and then you're memorizing all this information about this person that you're not even sure you're interested in yet. I don't even have, like, I've gotten asked that. Like, you have any questions? <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like... Yeah, people, we should be taught conversation class in school. You know, how to have a conversation but Ask it's interesting it's questions when and when, I hate when the bit of information comes out from that answer, go somewhere with it, see where it goes. Yeah, most most people do not really know how to hold a conversation, and it's. I think it also comes down to a lot of people just forget to be curious. That's good. You know, it's like curiosity sometimes, especially when you're attention deprived, like a lot of people in New York City are. Curious about others is hard because everyone needs more attention themselves. But that's, that goes to the more interesting thing. It's it's just like if you're not interesting, then that interesting builds the curiosity in the other person. And if you don't show that for them to be interested in, and that's why people are going on these dates and they're just going on dates to, I guess, push an agenda rather than really... I want to get to know a person. I just don't want to be single or Valentine's day is coming up and I don't want to be alone on Valentine's day. So let me meet somebody. But oh, I think most guys have been on those it. dates with women that are looking for Mr. X to be the husband and father of our kids. And you're not anybody. You're just Mr. X. Right. You're just replacing whatever <laughs> <laughs> you just, you're just a place marker for the, for the dream. Whatever this dream is, you just are that. And Please that, know that I am not looking for a dream on Valentine's Day. I just want to <laughs> make sure this... that I don't fall under the umbrella, you know, of single women that are trolling for, you know, the one on Valentine's Day. I had, like, an, on and off, I had an on and off girlfriend who she claimed to just be enamored with me. And... So you knew she was lying. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. I, I literally had to tell it. She was like, "I love you. You're the perfect guy for me." Blah 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 blah. And I had to tell her like, "You you don't really love me. Like you don't love the core person of like who I am. You love what I am. And I'm just a tall guy with a good job and his own car and how like that was that was what she liked." There was no way she liked me because everything about me she kind of wanted to like fix. <laughs> I was like, like but this is who I am. I I I am this. I have this stuff because I am ambitious. And that ambition, going back to Yael and her phone, I didn't turn that off. I didn't turn off the ambition 
you weren't attracted to my ambition. You were attracted to what the ambition result was. Yeah, I, that same girl that I mentioned before, that was pretty much the end was I got this opportunity um, and uh, she was like, it would, it would have taken me out of town. And she said, well, you don't want to do that. I said, well, yeah, that's kind of what I want to be doing. She said, no, you don't want to do that. And then I, that was then that I really realized, wow, she doesn't even want what's, she doesn't even want what I want. She wants what's best for her. She wants what she wants. She wants like a house husband or something. Was it, was it, you were, were you going away as in like it would justify a breakup or you were starting to travel for a project or something? Yeah, it was a tour. Oh, well, then, so this is for your, this is your job, right? Exactly. But she didn't want me to go okay. anywhere. Well, I mean, then bye, Felicia. Bye. I'd be like, bon voyage. I, you know what I mean? Exactly. I'll Skype you every day. Bye now. Like, good for you. You're advancing in your career. Like, that's the direction you should be going in. It's one thing if you're saying we're breaking up because I'm taking on a project. That, like, if, if a man... I feel like loves somebody and wants to be with this individual, even if they travel, if you usually go for an individual that is going to be on board with the traveling, usually it's when someone doesn't, that's not going to, the person doesn't have less commitment to their job because it upsets you. Like the fact that you're not cool with it, then your needs are not compatible. You, yeah, you know, kind of, well, it kind of shows us a deep insecurity <laughs> too. I mean, if she, if she had that much insecurity about the relationship that I'd be gone for a couple of weeks. I mean, of course, there's a risk when one person leaves for a time that, you know, the distance puts a strain on it. But if that's what the person wants to do, you got to trust and let them go. I, I get the insecurity part, but I also don't think it's always that. It, it, we have to do a better job of finding compatibility. And I don't think as a whole we do that. And that's part of it. Like, Yael is a girl who is, if it's security, is definitely secure in herself to say, all right, if it's two weeks, I mean, I don't know how long this tour was. I hope it was more than two weeks because this was just ridiculous. Um, yeah. Uh, but there are people that, yeah, they want that person to come back home all the time. And then there are some that are completely okay with being with their own thoughts. You said something about this earlier. Like, you being by yourself for 24 hours, you would hate that. If she's someone that's like that, then she needs someone every 24 hours to come and break up her own thoughts, at least. Right. Well, that's what friends are for. Right. And that's, yeah. a, whole diff that's a whole difference of codependency. <laughs> that's a whole different topic. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's like, another thing that relationships get into trouble with. I see a lot of relationships, once they uh, get really close, they kind of isolate themselves from their mm -hmm. friends. And it's usually the beginning of the end. You know, when you're single, you, you have a lot of friends, you have a whole social circle, and then you meet, a, you meet someone, you fall in love, then you just slowly isolate, sp start to spend all the nights just alone together. And that, that continues with, like, even back to how we said our philosophy on this is just, I always say, you got to earn boyfriend Keenan. Like, until I'm your boyfriend, I'm not going to act in such. And just like we were saying, you got to earn the next date and all of this stuff. Um, you kind of have to always fight for your identity. Because people, naturally, I'm not even saying that some, there's somebody that's vindictive or intentions to change but people naturally try to, to change your identity um in relationships you become this other thing that's why that seinfeld episode was so great it's like george divided against himself you can't you have to fight to hold your identity in these relationships and it's supposed to be a joining of two worlds and not just some crazy what happens is people get sucked into one right it's either this guy gets sucked into Yael's world because her gravitational pull is so strong that he then eventually just loses himself, and that relationship will still fall apart. Yeah, you can't expect the other person to satisfy all your right, needs. Right, because now you just, you've just literally sucked this other person into your orbit, 
instead of finding a way to to really join together both worlds and live coincidentally and coexist. Well, I think this goes back to the Disney fairy tale of love. You know, they don't mention all this stuff. Right, that's because they never show the backstory to the dude. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. Who the, the fuck Prince cares? Backstory right? is never in any of these no movies. No one gives a shit. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, he's a prince. Return the slipper and lock that shit down. No one That's, even asked why well, he's single. I mean, except for right. uh, except for Aladdin. Oh, Aladdin. shit. Aladdin was the first, the, the first one, right? And the only one still. Yeah, well. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Lion King. Lion King. Simba, Simba ha- they, they told Simba's backstory. Simba was the story, well, but that move, that that was not about him finding a queen. His 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 was about Nala. Nala was his queen. Him. Nala had he to find him. Her on the way. Nala had to find him and make her make him fall in love with her. Can you feel the love? He she had to no, fuck I'm saying, Simba. I'm saying the, the she had to the fuck Simba goal, for him to like be like okay yeah I'll become the king. The goal of the movie wasn't every every other fairy tale that we're talking about right. It's the, the it's the woman's goal to find the guy. In these ones, outside of Aladdin and Lion King, the goal was him to become a king. It wasn't even about the girl. The girl was just you're gonna be there. a king. You're gonna get a woman, dog. Like that's what I'm saying. If you become right. interesting, women are just gonna come. <laughs> that's what not sure. that that was just a side effect on his. Listen, journey. homeboy, we're gonna make you so interesting. You're gonna lock that shit down with the princess. That's it. You're just in the journey. <laughs> or you just become the king, and then you have your choice. <laughs> right. It's so funny. But every other one, it just that's what uh, that's what it is. These women are put in they, it doesn't matter. They just want the prince charming. They don't care that the prince charming was abusive to the last chick. But would they want would they want the pauper charm, charming? It all how depends. Much the, how much is the charm and how much is the prince? Mm-hmm. Eh, we don't know. Everything I mean, because that, that, that still exists. You know, if you're a wealthy, successful guy, you would just end up with a more attractive woman. <clears throat> yep. Very much so. You know, I watched um, I watched a uh, Amy Schumer special the other day, <laughs> and <laughs> she made she made a very interesting point. No matter what you feel about her, Louis, you mean, uh, you mean she made someone else's interesting point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she made. She made someone else's interesting point, and the point was uh, Kevin James Zookeeper movie, right? And we know Kevin James is not a heartthrob, but his love interest was Rosario Dawson, and she was saying that it's funny how still in Hollywood, the most unrealistic thing is, depending on your position, the guy is still going to get the most attractive girl. And that's still very much of a a thing in society right now. That it doesn't even matter. That's just consistent. And then you have people like Louie that automatically assume that to be the case. Yes. Wait, what? When, like when you see when you see somebody and the girl is more attractive than the dude, you automatically think, all right, he's rich. Yeah. It. It. it come on. Come on. I mean, this is everywhere in society. Look at Donald Trump's wife. Yeah, see? Come on. It, 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 you know, it can't be his personality. No, it really isn't. <laughs> Shit, you don't, see, you don't see me rocking with no tens or not even fives. <laughs> see? You get rich, though. I don't yeah. know. See, I always feel like I attract people that are substantially better looking than me. I don't know. That's how I feel. I've Maybe like, it's a sign of a good personality. No, Maybe. that's because she actually is no. interesting, and she'll. Yeah, well, yeah, she's she's like a you know reality television. Uh, television, you know, she you know you don't know what's gonna happen. Oh shit! Here's a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I think we went from compliment to insult. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna kill me while I'm asleep. I'm not even. <laughs> so funny. Men are attracted to the danger. Yeah. The danger of saving lots of money, making better choices, and like the danger. 
<laughs> having someone who's like, oh, you're going on tour. I think that's great. Go collect that paycheck and fucking live our dream. I, you know what I mean? I, it's rare. It's rare. I mean, I've seen it the other way, too. I've seen I had a guy friend that wouldn't let his girlfriend. They lived together. And she had a chance to go on a European tour with a band and as a photographer, because she's a photographer, for three weeks. And three weeks? Three weeks. And he said no. He said that's no. That's ridiculous. That's why. Can we go back? That's why I wanted to know. How long was your opportunity? Uh, I would have been between two and three weeks. It wasn't even like it was oh just like God. the beginning of a thing. It didn't even end up happening. But it was like, mm. oh, this thing could happen. And she immediately was like, no, why do you want to do that? You shouldn't do that. If your significant was, other would stop your dream for three weeks. And that's when I knew she was an insignificant other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, kill yourself. That is crazy. That is just exactly. Crazy. Now, I, this is what I'm telling you. This is this is a whole different. This is why I'm like I've gone through this. I had a project. I had to go to Australia for six months. Uh huh. That's, that's a legit conversation. I'm I'm yeah. telling you right now. For three weeks, I'm just telling you I'm going. Like there's not right. even a conversation. It's just I'll be back in March. I'm leaving in March. That's it. Like that is. But six months was like, all right, th- this is this is something that we have to discuss. Okay, so, but, like, backstory, though, I've dated, I've had a substantial amount of relationships of my adult life prior to, like, my spouse that they did not live in the country. I dated someone from Germany for a very long time, and he flew back and forth. Now, he had the financial means to do this. He's a surgeon, but I'm saying irrelevant, the time commitment, you know what I mean? And the, and the level of trust to do that like, for over a year. I feel like, uh, you need to stop with all your stories because yes. no one can relate to dating a Ford air and a surgeon <laughs> that's going to fly back and forth. You're not helping. <laughs> this is not our listeners. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Uh, my apology to our listeners, Daniel Simmons Ford, by the way. Thank you for your support. Next time I'll use the ticket just to rub it in Keenan's face and watch him squirm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, is that... Keenan would die. He'd be like, what? Oh, my God, no, she got it? It would be like fighting me over the fucking, like, golden ticket. You know what I mean? I have a, I have a that's, girl, that's I have a girl sure. who... Uh, yeah. I have a girl that I used to date. And let me tell you this. Actually, I'll tell you two things. She's uh she's at the Super Bowl right now, and this is this is another one of those girls who is like uh she's like um you know we're meant to be we should be married all of that. Maybe not you'd be at the Super Bowl this weekend but, if that this, was true. This is this is what she this is exact this is why women are so crazy they just have no idea. She offered she offered she invited me to like move. She's down south somewhere. She invited me to move down south in her house. She was like, yo, I'm going to build you a man cave for Christmas, blah, 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 right? And as a man, I can't just go be a, a home. Like, I can't go because you're offering me a man cave. It's a pride thing. To not offer me a Super Bowl ticket, though, would have to be the dumbest thing. <laughs> like, I, you have no idea. I'd have been right there. Just as whatever she wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're going to travel to Australia for six months, you, you know, you have that conversation. But you could also say, why don't you come visit me at some point, you know, break it up. Right. But that's part of the conversation. That's part of, OK, I'm going to go. So to help manage this, it's um, you can come out for a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, yeah, show that's... that you want them there. You're not you don't want to get away. That's what I learned towards the end, towards the end of my career in that and in that lifestyle, I would then bring the girls out if it was a cool location. Um, But I didn't at first. At first, I, I thoroughly enjoyed travel and I thoroughly enjoyed the freedom I had, like being being in a new location on business by myself. And I wouldn't do that. But that was part of going back to the growth of learning the priorities. It was later, all right, well, I, I'm here. I'm here for free. I didn't pay for my ticket, and I'm not paying for a hotel. And I'm not even paying for food. 
So I can buy you a ticket to come hang out for whatever if you're that important. You know, and for for the girl for the girl's perspective, that was part of your package. You know, if they want to date you, they got to deal with you traveling a bunch. Yeah, you know but that's that, all part of it. If you're going to date a a comedian or a musician or someone that's going to be out every night, then uh, you know that's part of it. If you accept that lifestyle, you got to accept it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there was this girl that I was talking to who still kind of stalks me. Um, I I didn't go for it because she was all the way, all like eight hours away in upstate New York, and she, she stalked you from eight hours away. Yeah, she she followed me on Twitter, Facebook, and she's like she saw like I have my own podcast, and you know she le- listened to all. She was like my number one fan, and yeah. you know, and when I realized oh you're eight hours away, this ain't gonna work out. She said, oh, well, maybe you should stop being a comedian because I don't like how it makes you look. I mean, I don't like how it makes you, uh, how you act when you're a comedian. And She she immediately tried to control me, and I didn't even, you know, we didn't even meet. And then when I said, like, look, I'm not, you know, I don't want to pursue anything with you, she, uh, she started threatening to send people my way. Wow. <laughs> I bet and, she's and, really good in bed. No, I, well, how the fuck should I know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't think you should find out. Yeah, no, no, no. no I don't want to catch what she got. Uh, but it's like that It's like uh, that with every relationship. As you're dating, you know, the red flags start to pop up. Red the what? other shoes start to drop. Uh, and they're then always there. Yeah, they always reveal themselves, and then you start to figure out, okay, well, but do I want to deal with that? Do I want to deal with that? Is that going to work? I mean, the whole comedian thing, I, I find that to be like a, a, a transition, too. Because when I told women, like, I would dr- travel on business when I was had a nine-to-five job, quote-unquote, they were definitely, up front, way more receptive. Now, when I travel for comedy, <laughs> it's, always, it's always a little apprehensive. Sure. Well, you're on stage. Everyone's staring at you. You're the center of attention. But it was the same thing. Like, literally, my my job hasn't changed. It's just the art has. So, literally, Mm -hmm. my job was to present technology software. So, I was the same. And I I used the same tool. And that's how I kind of found out that comedy was the love. My presentations were funny, which is why I was good in that arena. Right. make technology funny. Where... So but how many women would be in these technology conferences? All the time. It's nothing but it's nothing. It's corporate events. Uh-huh. It's, it's literally it. It honestly, I think you get more more on action there. On that side of the fence, you get more groupy love on that side um, because it has a more of a respectability fashion to it. It's like here's a guy on stage also making money in a corporate capacity versus comedy has an air of you're playing around until you're Kevin Hart, right? Like it's just a hobby. They call it a hobby, right? Everybody yeah. around you calls comedy a hobby until you make certain, until you're like on TV consistently or whatever. But in that, in the corporate world, you're not famous, but you have this air of respect. So once you got off stage, y'all are all in this hotel. When I tell you... I, I, I can't even tell you. Right, because you're staying overnight with everyone that was there. It it I I was ridiculous. No wonder you never brought your girlfriends. Yep. I mean, I only <laughs> had one. I only had no. I've had two over the course of that. The first one, she uh, it was in the beginning, so I had just gotten into this position, and that literally is the reason that we're not together now. Um, is because, like I said, I didn't learn how to handle it. That was the, the example of my client was in Australia yo, before shorty, I had to move. Yo, shorty, I gotta, I gotta highlight you for a sec. Um, this ain't, right. th- this ain't working out, son. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta go my way. It was, uh, um, I, I have been dumped before, Lou. You don't um, have to always put like, that. I gotta. Like, well, I've been dumped for pursuing comedy on a professional level. One of the a guy that I dated. Um, I got put. They okay. tried to get back together with me, like in October, for a second. One of the reasons he broke up with me was like I had to give this a lot of thought before I broached this topic with you. He goes because like 
I want to make, make clear I'm not talking shit, you know, talking shit, but, like, you're really good at this. Like, I didn't get, you know, like, I didn't get how serious this was. Like, I didn't get it. I get it now. Like, you're actually, I think you could be professionally funny because I actually believe you have the capabilities. I, I like, believe in you, but then I have to think my parents would, like, this, this would create issues for me, and I'm not, at, and, like, when he bro- when he tried to get back together with me, I referenced that conversation, and he was like, "Right." And I said, "Wait a second. So you're trying to get back together with me, contingent on me agreeing to?" He's like, "Well, I wasn't going to bring it up." I said, "You weren't going to bring it up all at one time, basically." Right. So I'm saying it was still, still an issue. It was so this would still be something that bothers him. Only he approached it from an angle of. Do you think that I would have enough to emotionally provide for you where you could just not do this and like be just work in real estate and you know or like something less attention causing to the situation? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why uh why guys really have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. I do. <clears throat> what do you mean, why? Why do guys have a Most problem? Most men don't want their private life broadcasted on a public forum. Well, if I mean, you're that, dating that's... someone who's a comic or has a podcast or in any level of entertainment, it's at some point, whether you're singing songs about them or telling jokes about what they did in bed two nights ago that comes up in your routine. No, I think that's a conversation then. The conversation is, I would rather you not talk about us. It's a whole different thing of, I'd rather you not be a comedian. That's a tough one because saying you'd rather not talk about us, that's like saying, saying to a comedian, I'd rather you not talk about part of your life. I don't right. even know if that's but possible. That's supposed to there, like, I would only hope if I were dating someone, you fucking only hope I did. Like, you're supposed to incorporate yourself at least to some degree in, in their artistic, not, you know, aren't you supposed to be their muse a little bit? Like, it's supposed, if you're all on the same page, this isn't a problem. When it is a problem, you're not on the same page. But that's a, there's a very fine line. Like, I get someone saying, I'm private, don't talk about our relationship on stage. I get that being a valid concern and that's something that you that's some that's something that you as a comedian might have to you might have to just rise to the occasion i'm sure there's plenty of other things going on in your life that you can fill an hour and a half act without touching the intimacy of your relationship but it's such a prevalent thing in your mind that it'd be hard to not talk about it yeah isn't that why howard stern said his first wife couldn't handle it anymore. She was sick of uh, him talking about their relationship on the radio and everything being public. Right. So then don't marry Howard Stern. Exactly. Don't marry you gotta, Howard you gotta Stern. You got to accept the whole package of the person. I saw, I saw something on Facebook this week that made me want to vomit in the toilet. That bitch that Chris Brown, who doesn't even, we don't, we don't even give a shit about her name, that Chris Brown had a baby right. with. That should have been a Planned Parenthood situation. She kept it because why not? It's Chris Brown, and they call the kid royalty. Okay, this baby has gotten her zero publicity. No one gives a shit. She doesn't have a reality show. It was, a, it was an agreement from the beginning that this baby, this private life of his, having, being a father, was going to be out of the media. She threw this kid in the, in the media, and then she recently did it again with allegations because he's a pot smoker. Give me a break. Like... It's anything to, like, suck the attention, I feel like, out of somebody. I hope she's getting good alimony for it anyway. 2500 a month. Pretty sweet. She wants an increase to $16,000. $16,000 a month. Why? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's another thing. When you're a celebrity guy or a rich guy, you have to constantly be careful of women that just want your seed for the money. Don't even be, that's not even, 
That's something to teach to everyone. Like, guys, your seed is valuable. There's a dollar amount attached to your seed for everybody. It's just how much that dollar, but it still hurts no matter what. Hmm. So v- keep it valuable. Like, know where you're placing that shit because that doesn't. Yeah, like, I bet these guys have to, you know, after they have to take the condom with them. <laughs> you know, can't just leave it on the floor. They probably take the condom off, go right to the bathroom, wash it out seventeen times. Either that then or cut they, it up. Yeah, either that or they Burn get it. some. Um, they get some Tabasco sauce and they dump it in there. In the oh, condom? Geez. Yeah. What does that do? It kills the sperm, that, and if she tries to, good. and if she tries to inseminate herself, she burns her. Ass. Oh my god! Is that oh how Mexican my babies god. are born? God. <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> That's how you make Mexican babies. Exactly. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> I thank have God, thank God I'm not Mexican. Who's taking a condom with them post the, post the act. I'm saying any woman who's I mean, my God. I hope uh, that's awful. It happens. It's crazy. Uh, I, how effective? Oh, because they. I think sperm live for 48 hours, right? That's crazy. Uh, Is that right? Well, only only it depends. It depends. No idea. It depends on the seasoning and also whether um, uh, preservatives are used. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it, if you put MSG on that shit, they become super Dude. babies. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. And also Asian. I don't know how that works. Oh God. <laughs> So. For some reason, that sounded more racist than my Mexican baby comment. Yeah, I, know that. I think it's because you care more about Asians. <laughs> <laughs> They're both yeah. completely racist. Like, oh my god. For, I think, like, I had something happen that was so, it was hysterical, but, like, I really, <laughs> I learned, like, the colors of my soul. <laughs> oh god. The, there was a time where I thought for a second, like, I wasn't having a period, and I thought for a second, like, oh, God, am I pregnant? And the last person that I theoretically slept with, now, the timetable would be if I were pregnant, I probably... Theoretically would... slept with? What? Well, no, I didn't see... <laughs> I actually slept with him. But I'm saying the sure. timetable that it would be... Theoretically. She, she, yeah, just, she just... Theoretical. It happened. Yeah. Anyway. She, it was like, she, in order for Yell to fuck, she had to take 60 hours of classroom learning. <laughs> <laughs> the theory of sex. Yes, 101. So... No, but this is awful. Damn it, you almost bit my dick. Sorry, Professor. For for a second, for a second, I thought I was pregnant. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, my God. And it wouldn't even make sense. I can't even get pregnant. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, my God. But the the fear of having this guy's baby was so big, I was not even going to chance it. I went to the dollar store and bought, like, four pregnancy tests and took them in intervals. The dollar eight. store. I was like, <laughs> oh, it's the same shit. Ladies, by the way, don't. It's all the same. Just one's more expensive than the other. They're just as accurate. They both deliver good and bad news. So I was petrified, and then I thought to myself, if I were pregnant, I would be, I would be, oh, my God. That's, and, like, it's not even about the, it's not even about the child support paycheck. Like the thought of oh my god, like the million dollar baby would not have would not have done it for me. Like I feel like god. I could never trust dollar store pregnancy tests. If <laughs> no, it was... they're reliable. They are. <laughs> yeah, you. If it came out positive, I'd be like, no way, no way. Let's go get the high quality ones and see. Right? No, sure. I mean you can always double check. But I have friends who found out they were pregnant from. That's how I found out about it. They should reason, sell. They should sell abortions at the dollar store. <laughs> For some reason, I, think, I have a problem with the do- I, I have a problem with the casualness of this whole, <laughs> the whole transaction. Yes. Like women at a certain point, like this shit. You, you, you see the difference. Gotta know. You see the difference though. The pre- the pregnancy test. You go buy the pregnancy test for a dollar. If it comes out with bad news, that guy now has to spend. Twelve hundred dollars a month. <laughs> like it's so crazy. How come we don't have a dollar store equivalent to how to handle this stuff? When dollar store pregnancy tests come up positive, it comes up with Planned Planned Parenthood's phone number. Mm. <laughs> no, like my friend. No, my friend Sarah actually, actually shows actually, a picture of stairs. She was telling me how she she and her husband were trying to get mm. pregnant, 
So she had to buy them in bulk. And she's like, yeah, there's no difference. And I was like, really? No shit. Really? I Listen, I've never had a, pos- an, in, a non-positive experience with one. I feel like they should be affordable. It should be affordable, but a dollar is crazy to me. Like, oh, yeah, but $13 for one, <laughs> that's, that's, and to have it be positive, like, wouldn't you rather buy the $13 one after you get the positive on the cheaper one? A pack of is more expensive than a pregnancy test. <sighs> Actually, it's even worse. A fifty cent a little Debbie cake costs more than a costs less than a, a pregnancy <laughs> test. Yeah, here, piss on the cake. What did what did women do before the tests? Um, so, what oh. what they what they would do? They would go underneath a bridge, and they would ask the old woman there, and they would cut up a frog. And Not at all. What happened? Um, that that hey no, this was in the science books. <laughs> and then you know uh, uh, they would say a prayer, and um, uh, you know, just drink. They go to the Catholic Church and get an abortion. Okay. Well, no, they don't do they they don't do that service there. I mean, they'll put a baby in you, but they won't take. I, it out. I don't know how y'all turned Valentine's Day to be the most racially insensitive <laughs> conversation <laughs> I've ever been a part of. It's amazing. No, that, there, you, that used to be where, what would happen. Um, the unwed mothers who found themselves pregnant back in the day would go to the nunnery. They'd get an abortion or they'd have the baby and give it up <clears> for adoption. And then they'd become slave babies in the church. I saw that movie. I'm a slave yeah, no, baby. Actually, becomes... there was a documentary. Was, oh. yeah. On Netflix? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Let me know because I, I, I need a couple of... Uh... I need a couple of documentaries to get me through Um, Valentine's Day. In in Ireland, right? They were keeping the babies and putting them to work. Yeah. They would. They would have. That's how they make the wafers for uh, communion. (laughs) All right, we're gonna end (laughs) this one before it gets too crazy. Gary, thank you for being with us. Is there anything that you have to promote? Always, but I'm not gonna bother you with it. Oh, go to go to my Facebook. Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter at Gary Gary Levitt, and I'm on Facebook as Gary Levitt. <clears throat> All right, Yael, what you got for me, girl? Uh, follow me, of course, on YouTube. Please download, like, subscribe for Love and Play on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Stitcher and everything else. And we have a headlining show coming up on February 21st for Real Talk Radio Pizza Time. We will post all of that information. And that's all I got going on so far. Take it away, Louie. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm your boy, Louie B. I, you know, I'm not racist. I just play one on this radio show. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, you know, follow my personal podcast, The Crotch Shot Radio Show. In fact, I do it live at Saturdays at 5 o'clock. Um, this uh, next Saturday, uh, February 13th, I'm going to be on Staten Island uh, entertaining the Guidos and the Guidettes up, over there at the Hashtag Bar, located at 388 Van Duzer Street, Staten Island. Take the ferry, and uh, it's really close by. Also, I have, and if you don't want to take the trip to the island, February 16th, I'm at the Broadway Comedy Club. Please, please come see me. It's uh, it's uh, nine thirty, and uh, follow me on the YouTube. Uh, follow me um, on YouTube, Crotch Shot Radio at youtube.com slash Crotch Shot Radio Show, or uh, Twitter at Louis B One, or Facebook Louis B Comedy. Also, please like, comment, and subscribe to For Love and Play, as Yael said. Take it away, Keenan. All right, everybody knows all my information can be found on my website, www.kenanweaver.com. That's K-E-N-A-N-W-E-A-V-E-R. And I learned from Yael and learned that the best excuse to give a woman to avoid dates is that you're bringing in money. So, Valentine's Day weekend, I'm working all weekend. I'll be part of the Laugh Tour at February 13th at the Comedy Art House in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. Then... On Valentine's Day, February 14th, I'll be at Rockwell's in Mamaroneck, no, Pelham. But all that information's on the website. Come on out. Bring your love interest. 
uh, I'll make you laugh at uh, how funny being single is. Thank you, guys. Thank keep loving. Keep playing. <laughs>